Buster come to the door mm -hmm. and he said to me, Tucker, we need you. And I said, what's the trouble? And he said, Brian's in a bad way. And I said, where is he? Mm. He said, there he is. And he was, oh, he was, he was hanging over the, the wall. Uh, what I seen him, oh, what a state, it was terrible. We didn't know what to do, so the only thing we could do was try and get to the hospital. I didn't go into the house, I didn't go into the next door. Mm. I didn't go to Tommy's house. I just, uh, it was just Brian on the wall uh, in a terrible state. So I got the car out, uh, put all the blankets over the, over the seats and everything, mm. and then got him in the car. To this day, I honestly thought he was dead. I yeah. thought when we got him in the car, he was dead. And, and you just couldn't believe it. The, we had the lights on and everything. And the only thing we could do is get him to an hospital. So we had to take him to the nearest one, which was the James Cook. Mm -hmm. We would never have got to, in my opinion, we would never have got to the general yeah. because of the traffic at that time of night. Yeah. Um, but we got him there. Yeah. As luck happened, mm. the porter on duty knew me, mm. and the exact words I said was problems. And he said, it's Brian. I said, yes, it is, it's Brian. We got him into a wheelchair, we don't know, we got it. Was, by this time, there was four of us getting him into the wheelchair because mm. you know he was a big guy. Mm. and. Um, and then, and then the last words I said was, Buster, stop with him, right? I'm, go I'm going back mm. to see the what's happened in Tommy's house mm. and uh, see what damage has been done there. And I said to the porter, if anybody comes looking for us, taxi driver. Mm. The, taxi the taxi driver's been. I come back, the rest is history. Yeah. You, you couldn't describe it. You couldn't, you couldn't describe how it was. Right. How, when you look at it, when I looked at it then, and then I knew that he was in hospital fighting yeah. for his life, I thought to myself, he's not going to make it. He's not going to make it. Um, and I just could, I couldn't believe it. And then uh, I kept in touch with the hospital through the porter. Yeah. He was telling me he's in a bad way. Mm. He had more visitors than enough just to see that it was him. Yeah. Uh, looking to see what would happen to him. Mm -hmm. um, the thing was, it, uh, with me knowing Brian as well as I did, mm. it was a friend. Yeah. So I would have done anything mm. to, to anybody, but he was also a friend of mine. Mm. He'd also, we'd also been here and there together. Mm. So it did, it did, the only good thing about it was he, he's with us now. And, it's, uh, and uh, when I seen him come out, and that was, that was it, and we... We've met them a few times since, mm. and uh, as good friends we were at the time, we were good friends. But because of this, it's like two, it's like two cowboys, like two blood brothers. You know, yeah, you, you, yeah, are, yeah. you know, I, I only have to pick the phone up, and I know Brian will be here. Mm. And, he, and don't get me wrong, he's been here for me. Mm. And people will see this, will see and, and know what he, what he, what I mean to women, what he means to me. He has a big friend. He has a bigger friend than he knows, and it's my son Mark, right. and he's disabled. Yeah. He's profoundly deaf and that he's working, but when he got into when somebody was trying to take the Mickey out of him, mm. Brian was the first man there saying, "Leave it all to me," mm. and that's what he does. And that's that that's 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 the type of guy he was with us. Mm. We've we've been the same. We know we all know what Brian's done in life, mm. but what people don't know is they don't know the other side of Brian. He has a he has a soft side. Yeah. He has a soft side. He, mm. he, he, it's, he, you know, it's just, it's unusual. Mm. But people look at, when you mention Brian Cockrell's name, they look at this, that and the other, and what went on next door. Mm. But then when I'm sat there in the pub, I can give a, a, a different side of the story. Mm. I can give the soft side of Brian. You know, as, mm. as, as, as my son will tell you, if my son was here, now he would tell you. Yeah. He thinks the world of him, you know, yeah. because he's, he looks after him like a godfather. Thank you, man, because I wouldn't be here today. Thank you. <laughs> Can I just want to tell you one thing, one, one thing about but Brian, I just want to tell you one thing, so this is, this is, you can cut this out if you like, mm. but we were in a club one night mm. and, and a guy, a guy, well three guys assaulted somebody in the club we were at mm. and Brian, Brian was there, so what Brian did, he went to the hospital to confront these lads. Mm. 
right? When he went into the hospital, when he went in, and, uh, right? When he went into the hospital, he, all he was going to do was talk to the, the people for, yeah. for assaulting somebody, mm. right? What we found out, the doctor come up to Brian and said to Brian, I'd like to thank you, sir. He said, it's unusual that you've come in, but he said, since, since you cut these three people have come in, they've already assaulted three, two nurses. Mm -hmm. So Brian went then. Brian done what he had to do. Mm -hmm. I got because exactly what I said. I said to him, you won't need a doctor or nurse, you need an undertaker if you don't behave yourself. And they just mm -hmm. packed in straight away. And these right. people here trying to help the heroes. So that's, that's the yeah. softer side, see?